everybody, welcome to Contra Talk. My name is Richard Henry, and my guest today is Tim Frisch. Uh, a great testimony and a bunch of other wonderful things we're going to be talking today. Welcome to the show, Tim. How are you doing, man? Doing very well. Great to be with you on your channel. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thanks for coming on. No, I appreciate it. Um, I know we've talked a few other times, both on my channel and your channel. Um, why don't you just tell uh, the audience a little bit about yourself? I know probably many people listening or watching uh, do know about you, but you know, why did you? Um, wh why do you do what you do? do you, have, you have you have you're married. You have children. Um, yes. You uh, came to Christ a number of years ago. Can you just tell us a little bit about who you are? Yeah. Well, my dad is a church planter. Uh, he planted a church in. Hamilton, New Jersey, back in 1975, and I was born in 1979 in Trenton, New Jersey. Okay. And so I grew up in a ministry setting, uh, just grew up, you know, hearing the gospel from the time I was a child. And so I put my faith in Christ. My parents led me to the Lord when I was six years old, and then I got baptized when I was eight years old. And I kind of, you know like a lot of kids who grow up in church, um, I didn't do anything crazy, really. I didn't, I don't have any kind of like a, a conversion experience that is, you know, some sort of, um, you know, testimony of having lived <laughs> some sort of crazy uh, life of sin or anything in terms of outward sin, but obviously we're all sinners. So it's a miracle that God has worked in my life. And I, um, yeah, I got I got into ministry. Uh, really, as a teenager, I felt called to go in that direction, and so I went to a Bible college, Boston Baptist College in Boston, Massachusetts, and that's where I met my wife, Julie. And uh, so then we uh, got to know each other. The Lord led us to each other. We got married in two thousand, in the year two thousand. And then we graduated in 2001 from college and uh, moved up to her home area in New Hampshire. Okay. And ever since then, we've lived up here in New Hampshire. Wow. And uh, and now we're six kids later. Uh, as you said, I have a lot of kids. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I've been involved in ministry really this whole time that I've been since since Bible college. I. Uh, I've been on staff at a church for a long time. I'm not presently on staff, but for 18 years, I did youth pastor and then associate pastor work. I've also been involved a lot with music uh, in church. And now I, God has really led me more to, um, to outreach type ministry. I do YouTube videos. And uh, that's, that's part of the outreach that I do is, is having a YouTube channel. And then also I work with different churches. I try to be an encouragement to different church ministries in New England because New England is, you know, a little different probably than where you are uh, in terms of the okay. amount of churches and just how isolated pastors can be. So a yeah. big part of my, my ministry is really trying to build up uh, others in the, in the body of Christ, uh, people who are ministering in these different smaller areas of new england i'm not i'm not you know in a metropolitan area it's it's yeah. it's rural new hampshire uh technically i live in a city called claremont it's a it's an old new england city but it's very small it's thirteen thousand people and the surrounding towns are less people yeah. you know so and then vermont is even less pop populated and that's right across the river from where i am so that's kind of the the big picture of, uh, you know, where I come from and where I'm at right now. That's great. But, bro. Uh, yeah. Yeah. New England's always intrigued me. Uh, I mean, originally from California, but you kind of see probably how people this way, although I'm in Kentucky now, but kind of view the West coast in California, probably Californians and people on the West coast view the East and new England, where there's just kind of, there's either, Oh, it's all terrible. It's all the worst. Or like most people say, California is there's celebrities everywhere. It's beaches and, and and there is that. But, you know, I saw, you know, only a handful. Well, it's probably several dozen celebrities, but like not you don't see them all the time. 
you know, so same thing. You kind of see the New England thing. You think, oh, it's so much like a Hallmark movie all the time. It's always fall. You know, it's just wonderful and brick and columns and just, you know, the good old days of history of yore, uh, which is probably that, too, but not all the time. Um I mean, I guess you can correct me. You're like, no, it's always like that. It always looks like a Hallmark movie, right? <laughs> yeah, it actually does. Yeah. <laughs> I know the um, fall is well, Right now, it's uh, it's it's trying to be spring. Uh, that's the way <laughs> I would put it. You know, you go outside and there there are finally, I think, you know, maybe some trees that are, that are starting to look like they're budding a little bit. Nice. But yeah, I mean, it depends on the time of year. Uh, yeah. Certainly the summers I really like actually, because they're pretty mild. Yeah. They're they're They don't get super hot. Um, maybe a, maybe a couple of weeks where it gets pretty hot, but still not like other places. And then the falls are gorgeous, uh, okay. especially, you know, during the, the earlier fall yeah. and then the winters, at least I, I like that the fact that the winters are just cold and they're not necessarily like that wet cold that maybe you probably would get more, it's it's a, probably a drier kind of a cold, which I prefer. I'd rather just get really cold and not be like that in between 40 something degrees cold. I hate that. So, yeah, I've always noticed what, like when you have four kids, because we have four people with like one or two, they're like, yeah, you have so many kids. And then like you have six, and it's like four, nothing. Like, yeah. you Actually, know, no, four, four is has, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, like, Depends how old they are, too. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but it's funny, like it doesn't. It uh, usually doesn't work both ways where, or it's like a two way street yeah. where it's, if you have more, anything less is like, that's a piece of cake. Whereas if you, if the person who has less looks at the other people with more, like you have six kids, are you insane? But, yeah, I know. Yeah. The Lord is, the Lord is good. <laughs> Lord is good. Uh, he does mm -hmm. provide. Um, what's the best month to visit New Hampshire? Uh, it depends on what your, like what for, I guess your for preferences fall. are. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, I think that the leaves uh, a lot of times are peaking around early October. Okay. Um, but, you know, you really have to look year by year, even how brilliant the, the, the leaf uh, changes are going to be, because it just really depends on the weather. Mm -hmm. And even, even what the summer was like can, can impact how the trees change. Yeah. Um, but yeah, somewhere around early fall, like Columbus Day weekend, I think, is kind of one of the times where people will visit leaf peepers. Yeah. Nice. No, that sounds good. We've never, I've been up through new England. It's been a while over the, we did a couple like road trips, like big time road trips in the summer, but not, never in the fall. Um, no, that's good. You mentioned, so you obviously you're on YouTube. What was, what, like, why did you start uh, doing YouTube? We all have kind of different reasons, especially those of us who are trying to be effective at youtube and trying to be professional and trying to you know talk about certain topics why did you start the channel and i guess when did you start the channel well i probably am a lot like a lot of other people you know i i watch youtube videos and uh started to think about oh maybe maybe i could start a channel you know and uh i was watching uh like think media a lot of a lot of people have watched their videos that talk about starting a channel and they, mm -hmm. they tend to really try to motivate people to start a channel. So I think I, I got motivated and, and the thought came to me as I was watching videos like that and watching content that I enjoyed. And then, uh, yeah, I, in August of 2018, okay. I officially started. And my first videos were basically kind of an overview of John Stott's basic Christianity. Oh, okay. So you can actually still go back and watch my first videos from August, 2018. And, uh, it took me so long to get any kind of an audience on YouTube. Um, I think it was, I think it was actually August, uh, excuse me. I think it was um, May of 2020 when I, when I hit a thousand subscribers. Okay. Um, wow. So it took, you know, well over a year to, to get to a thousand subscribers. Yeah. And I actually think even like the first, six to eight months it took me to get to like a hundred subscribers. So yep. nobody really wanted to watch my, uh, my videos at first. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's tricky. And I, I know I've, uh, I've, I've got a separate chat that several are YouTube channels, several YouTubers are in and 
summer exploding. I know you know Jason, uh, Jason Whitaker. He's been on your channel a lot. Mm. Uh, he's been on mine, and I've been on his as well. And, um, and Dear Woke Christian, I know many people know it. He's just exploded, and I love it. And it's so wonderful to see because not only has just his character shine through, but he wants to always lift up Christ and wants to hold the feet of whatever it is to the fire of the gospel. Um, mm. He's such a humble guy. So, and, and it's just, I'm so thankful that he's really, really exploded as far as just kind of popularity goes and everything. Yeah. Um, and it, it is, I mean, it really just depends on a lot of factors. I think I know some people, Oh, it's the algorithm and, Somebody who might be watching this might have a YouTube channel, probably does, or thinking about starting it. You know, I would say, and you probably would say, just just do it and hmm. see what happens. Try and get better, uh, get better equipment, but don't, you know, blow your budget and be more professional. Look, I, I've always had, even as a designer myself um, or doing graphic design, I guess, of seeing what you like. All right, I like this and more or less copy it, right? There's nothing new under the sun. Obviously, you don't want to plagiarize, <laughs> but, you know, use the same kind of elements or the same colors or the same themes um, mm -hmm. to a degree and, you know, be inspired and, and press on. So that's good. Yeah. So you said it took over a year to get a thousand subscribers. That's that's good. So everybody can take heart in that if, it, if they feel like they're slogging through not making any progress on their channel. That's, that's good. And you're at what, like, are you at like 17,000 now, 18,000 now? Yeah, I'm at 17,000 something. And uh, honestly, yeah. yeah, my my channel in recent months really hasn't been growing that much, you know, so I, I go through plenty of times where, you know, it, it just kind of plateaus. And I mean, I, get, I, you know, have growth trickling in, but it's not like my channel's really exploded. Like you said, Jason at Dear What Christian his his channel seems to be really quickly growing and i i could see that continuing and he's yeah. doing a lot of things the i think in the right way i think he 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 just he kind of naturally had some things that he put in place mm -hmm. and ideas that he had that work really well on youtube yeah um but for for me we're all different you know our personalities are different i really just at this point in my life wanted to talk about different things and do the things that I'm genuinely interested in, which is a variety of things that yeah. doesn't always translate well into reaching a certain target audience, <laughs> but right. at least I'm, you know, I'm giving my, my fresh perspective on everything, you know, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah. So you do. Uh, so John Stott, you started with, uh, I know you did a lot of coverage with MacArthur during, the Rona yeah. uh, lockdown and all that stuff and how, how yeah, and I just got uh, a and crazy that was. I just got a book sent to me. Oh, uh, wonderful. Oh, for, that's James. For review. That's right. James, uh, James Coates here. Yeah. God versus government. And the foreword is by John MacArthur. Yeah. And I'm going to be reviewing this book with Jason Whitaker. Oh, uh, wonderful. We're, nice. we're planning to do a video on it together. So that should be sometime in May. Didn't you, you also interviewed, was it Aaron as his wife, right? Jason? Uh, That's correct. James' wife, yeah. Yeah, uh, Aaron Coates. Yeah. And wasn't Jason also on that video? Yes, yes. Okay. Jason has done a lot of conversations with me. Yeah. There, cool. were, there was about a year there uh, where, where we talked, it seemed like almost weekly uh, on my channel. And, uh, you know, he's a great communicator. And uh, has a has a really interesting perspective, uh, yeah. partly, you know, just because of what he himself has experienced in in his background and coming to where he's at. He's now in a Presbyterian church, mm -hmm. but he wasn't always Presbyterian. Um, but he, you know, really loves loves the scripture, loves the Lord. And like you said, he's just got a great personality. <laughs> so I think yeah. people just really enjoy listening to him. Yeah, it's fun to talk to him. So, yeah, yeah, we've we interviewed Aaron Coates, Pastor yeah. Coates wife. That's how I actually I believe that's how I saw or I guess found out about Jason. And then I'd reached out to him and talked to him and everything else. So it's good. I love how the Lord kind of works and moves certain things. It's wonderful. Um, so obviously interviews, just like what we're doing. Um, Bible reviews is your other main thing. Is that probably your staple kind of now? You take a Bible. I know we were just talking off camera and I just got a new 
my little new ESV for preaching. It's a reference Bible. There's 4 million, you know, thin line, large print, reference, study, leather, not leather, this and that. Why don't you just kind of go a little bit with and just kind of unpack how you got into Bible reviews? I mean, they send you. I mean, publishers send you free stuff, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, why don't you unpack that and just kind of tell your story? Maybe maybe that's a, 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 a secret. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no, you, no, it's no secret. Um, <laughs> if you have a certain amount of subscribers, I don't know what it is, to be honest. But I do remember, I'll tell this story. I contacted Crossway about re possibly reviewing Bibles. Mm -hmm. And I might have had 300 and something subscribers. Um, and they said they were not really interested at the time. But, you know, yeah. you know, good, good job with your channel. Yeah. And uh, then like a year later, because of the John MacArthur thing, that got a lot of people watching my channel. A lot of people subscribed. So things actually grew a lot toward the end of 2020. And uh, I wrote back to Crossway, I think, uh, when I had, I think, around 10,000 subscribers, somewhere like that. And they were suddenly very interested in the <laughs> <70 laughs> copies. So um, yeah. I don't think you need to have 10,000, but, but apparently more than 300, at least for some publishers. It depends on yeah. the publisher. Sure. Uh, yeah, I will say this. I go through seasons. I wouldn't say my channel, the, the staple, is Bible reviews. Okay. Uh, I have had times where I've, I've talked about Bible translation, did a series on Bible translations. So a lot of people have asked me questions about Bible translations, and I get a lot of interaction about that. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, physical Bibles is is one of the things I do. I also talk about different articles and, you know, do cultural commentary. To be honest, though, I go through seasons because, you know, it depends on kind of what I'm personally going through, but also how helpful I think what I say is going to be. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff recently about John MacArthur uh, and some criticism from Julie Roy's, and I have talked about it a little bit, but, um, but you know, I, I, I feel like sometimes controversy can just be tiring because... Yeah. Is it really getting anywhere? Is it really yeah. helping anybody? So, and then also just the negativity of it, you know, that mm -hmm. it can just be so negative and the comments get real negative. But, you know, so I don't, I don't just cover controversial things. I don't think I could take it, yeah, <laughs> but seriously. sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. Um, and then I try hopefully with whatever I do to be helpful. So Bible reviews, I hope are helpful because people a lot of times don't have a bookstore anymore. Mm -hmm. where they can look at Bibles. They really re rely on looking at online reviews because yeah. you don't have the amount of Christian bookstores available that used to be around. And, um, and, and so it's just a lot more convenient, easier for people if they want to know, okay, what is this Bible like? And is it worth getting? I'm able to give them a, a, a close look at it up close and personal look at that particular Bible and then talk about it a little bit so they can get a good feel for if it would be worth uh, them spending money on. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I actually will say that I think it was the beginning of 2019 when I did a, my first Bible review on a couple of Skylar Bibles, which okay. are very nice. Skylar and uh, that was one of the first videos people actually wanted to watch. So that's kind of how I got into it is, yeah. you know, and I, I've told you this, people are much more interested in what you're talking about. If you can find the right thing to talk about than they are yeah. in you, especially if they don't know you, right. <laughs> you know? So yeah, we're all, that, we're all charming and amazing and funny and witty and cool and amazing and awesome and amazing <laughs> or whatever. But are we, and really right. we might be, but, if somebody doesn't know who you are, yeah, um, that's right. I mean, yeah. they can get to know you. Have, obviously, I'm sure you have supporters who just appreciate your wit yeah. and take on things. But that takes time. <laughs> it's not it just, does. oh, Tim Fresh. That sounds great. Look at him. Yeah. And, you know, exactly. after one video. Exactly. Um, so, yes. No, that's, that's, and that's and, they, and you, you shouldn't, you know, we, we can understand why people. I mean, it's not like every time you watch a new YouTube video, a new YouTuber, you're like, I've got to subscribe to that person. You right. know, it is a testing period. You need to yeah. kind of see is, do I like, do I really like what they're saying? Am I really getting something out of this? 
So the big thing is to provide something that's useful for people, right? That that's that's I think a, a major goal. Provide something that's actually useful. Yeah. No, that's really that's really good. Um, yeah, I mean, I like I said, I helped you helped me, um, and I I watched another channel as well to decide on what I was going to get. I ended up going to uh, the seminary. It's about an hour and a half uh, southern from from where I'm at now, where I where I went to school, and they've got a really really nice bookstore. Uh, in Louisville there. And I ended up just going there directly because there's just, there's nothing like, you know, physically mm -hmm. touching something and yes. holding it and everything else. That's um, right. But I settled on, on an ESV reference Bible. That's a little smaller. Like, would you call it a personal size? I guess it is. Is that what it's called? I think that's what it was. Yeah. And yeah. it's a single column with references in the middle. Yeah. In the center uh, of the Bible. Yeah. I like the I like the references a lot because especially if you're studying or even just reading, <clears throat> I mean I think people miss out if you know they're just doing their daily Bible reading. They're like, hey, I haven't read Hebrews for a long time. Let me read Hebrews, and you go through it and you see in the column, oh, what's what's it talking about Deuteronomy or what does it mean Exodus Exodus twenty verse whatever, and then you flip over to Exodus and it's referencing that. Oh, it's the Ten Commandments. I see. And then you go and you're like, oh, that and you kind of do these rabbit trails. It's so edifying. So, I mean, I encourage people always, you know, when they can do that, sometimes you can get too rabbit trail-y and kind of lose track. But that I mean, that's why I like, especially for preaching and teaching myself um, as well. It's it's you can get cross references that flesh out um, the scripture because so often, I mean, so much of the scripture, especially the New Testament, is, is effectively commentary on the Old Testament. And kind of this hidden meaning that's being more revealed and, and the shadows are being seen as their substance and so on. Um, so, no, that's it's, it's helpful. It's helpful for sure. Um, do you have anything planned as far as I know you said you're just doing that uh, review with uh, Jason on Coates book? Do you have anything else like big projects you're working on or any pie in the sky ideas you want to share with us? I wish I did. <laughs> uh, I will say, you know, just, just, uh, I do believe God is opening up some doors, uh, that I'm excited about, but they're not so much with my channel. Uh, okay. they're, they're just other things. So for example, I'm probably going to be teaching at Northeastern Baptist college oh, part time doing some music classes for them and, uh, kind of teaching worship leading type classes. Okay. And then uh, I'm also um, I'm involved with one of the local churches that's kind of kind of in a somewhat remote area of Vermont and uh, been helping out some with music there. But they have kind of a need that I'm it's it's just something God might open up for me to, to help them with, at least for for a time period. It's not going to be permanent, but just something yeah. that I could be a help and support to that church. Um, but, you know, I really do. I I'm you know, considering, I, I really do consider what I do missions outreach work. So, yeah. you know, whatever God opens up for me to do f during each season. And uh, so this season I've got some of these opportunities, but the channel is kind of something that allows me to, to interact with people all over the world and just put, you know, a little bit of who I am out there. I've been doing a lot more like scripture reading. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really started with Instagram. If you go on my Instagram, a fresh perspective, I do uh, those reels, and oh, I'm okay. amazed. Like thousands of people are watching a lot of these where I'm just reading, and I I know that's that's a good thing for people to hear. Just yeah, you know, if you're gonna you know, just let them hear the scripture. So yeah, uh, but I've been putting it on YouTube Shorts as well, just uh, okay. for those who are uh, maybe watching my channel and would like to watch that, they can. But mainly it's on Instagram that that's been really successful. Okay, cool. That's good. Well, yeah, check out Tim on Instagram if, if you're on there as well, the listener. Um, when, can you talk a little bit about just the climate of uh, New Hampshire churches, evangelicalism in general? Obviously, it's quite different than it is can, in Kentucky here or Texas or California. I mean, our, our, our country really is very diverse in a lot of respects and also very mm. similar in a lot of ways too. Um, but I know you've been up there in, in, in the Northeast for all your life. Is that right? You said you're in New Jersey and then 
So, but you've obviously been around and been other places and talked to other people. Why don't you just kind of flesh out your, you know, professional opinion, as it were, of the climate and uh, just gospel centered churches there in New Hampshire? Well, I, I'm, I'm curious, do you know what the, uh, the two least church states in the United States are? I knew one was Vermont. I guess the other one's New Hampshire. Yeah. And they compete, they <laughs> yeah. compete for the title. Wow. Uh, they, they sometimes go back and forth. So, yeah, I mean, that tells you something right there, yeah, <laughs> the climate sure. um, yeah. and the fact that, I mean, whatever you, you can see in your area. Uh, I actually talked to a guy who is in Oregon uh, pastoring, he did a church plant there, and uh, we, we met each other at the conference. Uh, he uh, has seen my channel and he, uh, he said hi to me. Yep. And uh, he was telling me about doing church planning in Oregon. And then I told him I was in New England and he said, wow, that's really tough up there. <laughs> you know. But uh, wow. I, I think in reality, America is facing the same thing everywhere. And yeah. it's just New England might be a little bit more on the front end of it. Uh, but uh, it's not like the values that you hear in the culture aren't seeping into every single state and uh, the people all over the place. So, and then there's also the positive. I think in New England, you, you do have less cultural Christianity. You have less percentage wise people who just go to church because that's what everybody else has done. Right. Uh, everybody in their family or everybody in their town or whatever. Uh, so people that go to church, they're choosing to do something that is a bit unusual. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of so that's a good side and and many churches especially you know the ones that are biblical uh th there's a lot of strong churches the other positive is i think there's probably less less territory territorial mentality because mm -hmm. it's not like we're encroaching on each other's ministries as much up here yeah. uh, so there, there's less competition less feeling of being threatened by other ministries Mm -hmm. uh, more co-op it's easier to to cooperate now there are still those issues it's it's not like everything is is perfect up here mm -hmm. uh in the church world and so you know but i do think you you for example you don't have so many churches just in a small area that they're just you know really fighting over who 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 can grab people's attention and get people to come into their doors. It's not quite as much that way here. And I think there's just generally much more of a spirit of cooperation, partly because being a Christian means you're going to, you're not going to be the, the, the normal, you're not going to be the norm up here. You are going to stick out in many ways as a Christian. And so I think you feel a sense of camaraderie with other Christians, even if you are from maybe a different background. Yeah. Uh, wow. So we have a Christian school here and our church founded it, but it yeah. has uh, incorporated other church uh, uh, people on staff there. And yeah. even with the school board, there are representatives from different churches and they they really d do come from some, you know, pretty diverse backgrounds, but but still evangelical. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, hold on real quick. My youngest. Normally, normally I don't get interrupted too much with, that's the nice thing with having, um, not being live. I definitely would say that. I mean, I've not been in California for eight years now, almost nine, but that's very much the same way. I would say Oregon, Washington as well. Mm. Um, and, and to be honest, I, I, I almost want to say I prefer that personally because being in Kentucky, we have a lot of just, well, that's how we've always done it. Or, well, I'm my, I'm a member there. My name's in that role, this and that. And it's kind of like, yeah, but you don't come, you don't participate. You're not giving, you're not praying, you're not offering up your time. You're not suggesting, Hey, how can I serve? And, you know, let's go proclaim Christ to this person or talking about evangelism or going on a mission trip. It's just, yeah, I'm good with God, you know, because I, I got baptized or something. Mm -hmm. It's it is very frustrating, especially as my native Californian uh, background is just like, yeah, if you're a Christian, now there is still cultural Christianity, I would say everywhere, 
but it's significantly less in certain places like New Mm -hmm. Hampshire or California or Vermont. Um, What is, I'm curious, what is the biggest denomination up there? Or is it kind of more, I know like Nets, NETS is a a New England, whatever, I forget it is, but it's like a church planting network that's been around, led by West Pastor. You've probably heard of it. And I think most of their churches are, you know, like Christ Fellowship Church of whatever, or, you know, Burlington Bible Church or something. They don't really adhere to a lot of, uh, they're not PCA or SBC or something. Is that kind of the case with all churches there? Or is there still like Baptist churches, Presbyterian, Methodist, or, or what do you got? Sure. You have a lot, you have a lot of variety up here. Okay. Uh, it's hard to even determine. Um, I guess if I, if I had to guess, the largest denomination probably would would be Catholic just because mm-hmm. that would be the the historically maybe one of the more consistent. It depends okay. what state you're talking about, because New England includes Massachusetts, Connecticut. Right. So there would be a lot of Catholic in those areas, I would think, some up where I am now. Mm-hmm. Um, congregational would be another one. Historically, there are there are uh, UCC churches as well as. Uh, the more conservative four C churches. Okay. Uh, and so you have congregational and um, Southern Baptists have had inroads up here too. There, okay. there is that. And I, I feel like I'm thinking if uh, you're talking about new England theological society, I, I know, I know of that group and uh, yeah. I, I really appreciate what they're doing. They're more reformed, yeah. but I feel like they, um, they maybe even have some ties with Southern Baptists, at least in terms of communication. They come to they came to Southern several times. I went. Yes. I, had, I yeah. was part of a dinner, and they were doing a presentation when I was on. Yeah. when I was in uh, school, so yeah, they pull yeah. from there, and I think Southeastern somewhat, and maybe Southwestern or Midwestern, mm-hmm. something like that too. So yeah, yeah. So there's Baptists, plenty of uh, Baptists up here, and yes. as well as just those churches that you know maybe are. Uh, maybe are Baptists, but don't have that on their, their sign. Right. <laughs> Baptistic. Covert Baptists. Those are the Covert best kind of Baptists. Right. Just... The so, non-denominational yeah. denomination. But, there, yeah. but there's also United Methodists. That would be another mainline denomination. Some Presbyterian. I haven't yeah. seen quite as much of that. Some Lutheran as well. Okay. Episcopal. So... Yeah, historic mainline denominations, and uh, you know, you probably are aware that uh, those those tend to be liberal, and that is certainly the case in general up here with those mainline churches. They would be very, uh, you know, theologically uh, liberal. Yeah, for the most do part. Do they do they have? And you might not know because you obviously go to like a good church, um, but they. I'm always curious because some of these denominations, I mean, have been rank liberal for decades, right? It's not like it's new. Like the PCUSA has been, you know, off the rails for a good century and, or or almost a century. And yet they still have people. I'm always curious, like who are the people going? I mean, are there, would you say that it's, it's, it rivals as far as numbers. Now I'm talking pragmatism, but are there still like a good number of people or is it literally like, you know, six, gray haired people only at each of these churches or you might not know. I'm just curious. Yeah. I, I don't know because I haven't really stepped into a lot of them. Um, but I would say if I had to generalize, I think, you know, they do still have places where their, their, their numbers are, are pretty solid, but I think in general, they're not as thriving as churches that are you know really strongly bible based i mean the truth is like <laughs> there is a sense in which it's really much more appealing to people to to like if i'm going to go to church it's having that high standard i mean you mm-hmm. know when jesus said take up your cross follow me i mean there's a sense in which people really that kind of in a in a way they long for that you know they mm-hmm why would you go to church if you're just literally going to be, you know, doing the same thing everybody else does? It kind of, you know what I mean? It kind of loses yeah. its purpose. No, that's, that's <laughs> so, my point many times. I'm generalizing, but I think that 
I think that's one reason churches that take a stand on things tend to do better because, mm -hmm. you know, why would you go to church if, if you don't have something, you know, now again, there's the historic, you know, the Catholic church, for example, you know, that's a, that's a very, uh, historic church. And there are people that, uh, you know, generationally have been part of the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm sure that applies to, to mainline denominations as well to some degree yeah yeah no that's that's an excellent point though and i hope i hope that's taken by the listener because um you know as a pastor and i know some i've got several friends who are pastors and sometimes i talk to more frequently than not and everybody who's you know a faithful christian generally you're going to be in a church or you're maybe transitioning but wanting to get to a church as soon as possible um is that we need conviction. Why would you, why really, why would you waste your time with trying to be in a place that looks just like, you know, the share concert or the Bono thing or the, mm. the, the Britney Spears, whatever, and some Ted talk with a Bible verse, like it's just kind of like, ah. you know, and I think we'll see that more and more not to be too prophetic, but with the kind of very middle East seeker sensitive, cool, cool kid churches that, you know, the bigger you get, the, the the bar seems to go lower and lower. Not always, but most of the mm -hmm. time that seems to be the case. And eventually, the, you know, the bubble pops and then people are kind of wrecked in the middle of it. And so, yeah, that's that's a really good point. Just take a stand. And, you know, those who are not in leadership, support your pastors, your elders, your deacons. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm really in New, Eng in New England. I'm largely contrasting that with with liberal churches outright right. like where right. they they're actually not they're not seeker sensitive because it's not like they're necessarily doing anything um showy you know they're okay. actually yeah. sometimes the most traditional in terms of the you know the rituals or the mm -hmm. or the you know the liturgy that they do right but the meaning of it is often not what it was originally founded upon and and they mm -hmm. certainly in in terms of their their prac like their actual carrying out of christianity their default is always we we just love people that's all god calls us to do and right. they interpret that as well that means you have to just always like be super accepting you know and so yeah. that doesn't call people to be different in any way it you know what i mean you, you, everybody in a at least where i live in a very unchurched or post-christian kind of a setting it if if you want to have a non-traditional view of marriage or even say marriage isn't necessary that's that's what everybody thinks right. uh, you know in our culture you know it's it's if yeah. you actually believe marriage is something that's supposed to be a man and a woman for life that you stick out <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And I mean, and ultimately, because marriage, I believe that God has ordered so many things because he's an exacting orderly God, that when you don't have that male, female for life marriage, it 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 eventually comes out, you know, eventually gets wrecked. Like, you know, you paint over mold, it'll eventually come out. It'll eventually show up in one way or another, paint over it again. Eventually it'll still come out. And unless you fix the problem, which is, you know, tearing out the whole drywall or whatever the case is. And so you have to go back to the original and you know, go back to fresh drywall, go back to original God ordained marriage. And then you stick out like you're saying. So, no, that's good. I've always I've, I've, I've often pondered that myself and I still and maybe you have more and you can add to it if you want to. But, you know, you'll have the churches that are kind of in the middle of the road. And, you know, I'm not saying all seeker sensitive churches are bad because they're not. But, you know, they're not great in most areas either. But you have kind of the middle road. Uh, certain denominations might do one or the other, like, you know, pulpit, no pulpit. Well, the pastor wears, you know, just this, like a button down, or maybe he wears a t-shirt, maybe he wears a three-piece suit and a tie. Um, but so often it is the liberal churches, which really, even with like Jay Gresham Machen from, you know, nearly a hundred years ago, it really is another religion. They're not actually even Christian. They're, they're worshiping, you know, love. They're worshiping some sort of cosmic unitarian deity. Oh yeah, that, sort of that can happen. Pluralistic thing. Yeah. Um, and yet those, especially the ones who are just rank, not even remotely Christian, although they kind of look like it, they have all the liturgy and, and all the stuff and all and the hymns and they sing still good songs. 
And, you know, not only is the guy wearing or the girl who's maybe a lesbian also wearing nice outfit, but she's also got the the whole garb and the black thing and this and the collar. And it's like, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts like on why there's almost an allergy for most confessional evangelical churches to say, ah, I'm not going to dress up for church anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore. We shouldn't have pews. Get rid of the pulpit. Just have a little table or maybe a clearer no pulpit. What, what are your thoughts? I'm just, I know it's kind of off the cuff, but do you have any thoughts mm. on that? Like why the liberals who are most mm. likely, it's not even, it's another religion, really. I, I agree with Machen on that, honestly. Uh, but they still pretend to be Christian. You know, I, I want to be careful because I don't know why people do what they do. And I don't, you know, it's kind of, it can be kind of like you're, you're criticizing as if, you know, you, you know, better than other people but yeah. uh i do i do i do question or or maybe i'm i'm curious if there could be a legalistic mm. aspect to and i'm thinking again of the liberal churches where it is about dressing up and and you know we do things the right way the way we've historically done them and then even that whole love thing can be a legalistic mm. thing where see i'm living the way jesus told me to live not like right. you people who don't really live the way Jesus said to live. You're, you're yeah. hateful. Mm. And there could be that. I think, I think there's a danger there really of, of self-righteousness. Um, and so I think kind of in reaction to that, evangelicals don't want to be legalistic mm -hmm. and uh, they don't want to put barriers. Uh, and, you know, there is something to be said for that. Like I think of the many people who, where I live, it's not a high, it's not an upper class area. They don't have nice clothes a lot of times or not a mm. lot of nice clothes. You don't want to make people feel like they have to be super dressed up to mm -hmm. be accepted and fit in at church. So I think, you know, trying to relate to people is good. But, you know, it's always a it's always things we have to think about. Like, isn't it also a good thing when we can say, hey, church is so special to us that we want to uh, we want to dress up and mm -hmm. and 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 look really, you know, because we this is a place that is important to us and it, and the, and the worship that we have together is important. And, you know, so it's not like wrong to do either, right. <laughs> you know, right. but uh, I think there's dangers in both, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're, you could be legalistic about, you know, how good you look when you go to church and well, we sure. have, we, we have to be one of those churches that people look presentable. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you could have the danger of, it doesn't matter, you know, and, and almost as if God again is just so accepting that, you know, we start to think of God as he just affirms everything we do. He right. doesn't even care how we dress. And it's like, well, yeah, actually he does care how we dress. <laughs> right. For sure. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's definitely, there's definitely a modesty there. There's obviously, and you know, we see places of braided hair, gold jewelry, braiding right. gold within the hair and so on. But yeah. again, some of that's, some of that is contextual and yes. cultural, but then that's sometimes right. people act like, well, because if that's the case, then I don't, it doesn't apply almost like, well, that's poetry. So therefore it, it doesn't apply. And it's like, I show you a picture of my wife on my phone. Well, I, that that's just a picture. That means you're not married. Like, well, that's stupid. Like, so we have these things that do have, re they have representation. And it's like, I've often pushed back and thought, Okay, well, we have politicians who lie to us through their teeth and um, big, big corporations, news media, CEOs, they all dress in suits. They dress nice. They've got the pantsuit mm -hmm. or the dress or the whatever. And yet we have Christians who are like, it doesn't matter. Jesus doesn't care. And it's like, I mean, we're not talking about salvation, though. We're not saying you need to wear this to be saved. We're saying mm -hmm. why. And I would kind of turn it on its head and say, why are you not? Uh, is it is it just a reaction? Is it? Well, I don't have to do that because I don't need to whatever. Or do you not have the clothes? That's possible. Like, again, it's not a salvation issue or even a sanctification. But the question is, if, if your CEO of your big company or the governor, you know, or say the president, I mean, again, you know, Biden versus Trump versus somebody else. But if they invited you to dinner, the Oval Office or rather the White House in general, you're not going to be like, ah, uh, that's true. I'll just, I'll just wear flip flops. That's that's so. true. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to apologize because right now there's a ton of construction going on. Uh, so you might be hearing no, okay. uh, like last la like last time we talked, you thought it was like a cat <laughs> or something purring, you know, but it's it's 
it's my building literally shaking right now. So hopefully it'll stay standing as I'm talking to you. That's good. What it makes me think of when you talk about, uh, you know, how we dress, uh, my son is presently his first job ever has been working at a local supermarket and it's a very old school establishment. It's a market basket and they actually, uh, they're a regional chain of supermarkets, but they actually have the young men wear white shirts with a tie oh, when wow. they go into work. He has yeah. to wear a tie. Yeah. Uh, so, and I think it does actually help, you know, it, it puts them into a certain mentality of when I go to work, I need to take time to prepare. I can't just show up half awake. I need to actually, you know, and I want to look presentable so that when people come in, they feel comfortable. Right. So you, you do, you have to look very culturally at what you're doing, but then you also have to look at your heart. Right. And I think that's what we have to be so careful of with all these things. You could be dressing up and have the nicest clothes and your heart could be in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. You could be dressed more casually and, and it's possible your heart is right in the right place yeah. and vice versa. Right. Yeah. No, that's good. Well, this has been fun. Do you have anything else you want to add before we depart? No, I think this was great. I'm glad we got, got a chance to chat a little bit, yeah, talk well. about a variety of things. Yeah, no, that would, that sounds good. Uh, or that is good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, again, I'm thankful for taking this time and just hearing a little bit more about you. Uh, for the listener, uh, the watcher, go ahead and check out Tim's channel, A Fresh Perspective, if you have not already. He is on Instagram as well. I didn't know about that, so check that out. He's got a lot of helpful things there, Bible reviews, different uh, cultural things, of course, commentary, talking about some more pressing time that, you know, that time's now past, talking about COVID-19 or whatever. Uh, but other things that teaching, and I think Tim really has, I've, I've watched his channel, and he was actually an inspiration for me. Um, so thank you again, Tim, for, for that and helping me start my channel as well. So yeah, I'm it's been a pleasure, that. brother. Yeah. Well, you have a good rest of your day and, uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you so much, Richard. God bless. Bye -bye.